So right now we're looking at the analysis of two categorical variables. We've looked at contingency tables and then we looked at some descriptive statistics or just really a bar graph for displaying bivariate categorical data. So right now we are going to start looking at how to calculate values that we would expect to see if two variables were not related. So those values are going to be called expected counts. So an expected count by definition calculates what we would expect to see if there was no relationship between the two variables on the contingency table. So in a contingency table, you always have two counts. You have an observed count, which is going to tell you what you actually saw in the data. And then when you start to make inferences, you'll add a second count to each cell, which is called an expected count. So here we are shown EC, and that's representing again an expected count. And an expected count again measures what you would expect to see if the two variables were not related. And to calculate that, it's row total times column total divided by the grand total. So that's how an expected count is calculated, and we're going to practice doing that for each of the cells represented in this contingency table. So here, my expected count will be based off of a row total of 485, so that's coming from this cell at the end of the table, times a column total of 612, and that came from this section up here. And then we have a grand total represented in the lower right-hand corner. So this would give us an expected count of 177.84. So now if I move to the next cell, my expected count for uh, yes smoking and no divorce, we'll still use the same row total because we're in the same row as the cell next to it. But now, because we're in a new column, we will use a new column total, which is 1057. But you'll notice for each of these cells, because we're in the same table, all of them will use the same grand total, which is shown down here in the bottom right-hand corner. So this would give us an expected count of 307.16. So then finally, in this bottom cell, or the bottom row, we have 1184. So we have a new row total because we're in a new row. I will have 612 as my column total, which is shown down here. And again, the 1669. So this would give me an expected count of 434.16. The very last cell, we have no smoking and no divorce. So I have a row total of 1184 times a column total of 1057 divided by the grand total 1669. And that gives me an expected count of 749.84. So the nice thing about expected counts is you can actually check your work. So the corresponding rows or columns for the expected counts need to add up to the total for that row or that column. So here, these two values should add up to 612. If I were looking at the yes row, they need to add up to the total 485. If I were looking at the no row, these two expected counts should add up to the total 1184. So what we'll ultimately use expected counts for is to see if there's a big enough difference between what we saw or the observed count and what we would expect to see if there was no relationship, which is what we call the expected count, to justify a relationship between the two variables that are shown on the contingency table.